Now, back to your turn on 1330 WEBY, Northwest Florida's talk radio. The phone lines are open, so call in and join the conversation at 623-1330. If Carl doesn't talk about it, it probably won't be talked about. Aren't you glad that he is on the air and back in the Oval Office of Gulf Coast Talk Radio? Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops, 1330 WEBY. All right, welcome back, Gulf Coast. Welcome back, America. Freedom Friday with Carl Gallup's Lieutenant Mike Zulo, our guest today. Lieutenant Mike Zulo is the commander of the Cold Case Posse, Sheriff Joe Arpaio, Maricopa County, Arizona. He is the lead investigator of the Obama fraud birth certificate uh, case. Uh, Lieutenant Mike, uh, welcome back. Hi, Carl. Hey, listen, uh, I, I, I want to open this up to let you just uh, share some things with our audience because um, we do have a large audience along the Gulf Coast and quite a large national audience, and, and, and this is the way we're going to get this information out. I mean, you guys have had s- several press conferences, but the mainstream media has either dropped the ball um, and or are purposely ignoring it. Uh, and, and so I, I want you to, in just a moment, just to kind of quick recap, a synopsis of, of what this whole thing is, how it got started, what your final analysis is up to this point, maybe, uh, you know, future plans, uh, what, what will happen if Obama doesn't win the election, will you guys continue to pursue it? What will happen if he does win the election, will you continue to pursue it, et cetera? And then, sometime a little later on, I want you and I to get into this uh, communist uh, uh, goals and agenda that were put into the Congress records in 1963. That's a completely separate issue, but you and I both have thoughts on that. But let me just ask you, Lieutenant Zulo, uh, during the break, we had a caller that called in and said, look, I can't hang on because I've got cell phone minutes. I'm on my cell phone and don't have enough minutes to hang on. But they asked, and this is a hypothetical, but just wondering if you have any ideas on it, just as a patriot, an American citizen. They asked if maybe you thought, had any thoughts whether or not there might be a bigger agenda here. In other words, if there is a possibility that Obama early on maybe didn't even know uh, that he had birth certificate problems, and, you know, that could happen. That could happen to you. It could happen to me. Let's pretend like it happened to him. They're asking the questions, could it be that uh, there are other powers around him and behind him, you know, handlers who are telling him at this point to leave it alone? What, do you have any ideas? Has anyone ever asked anything like that? No, but I, I think that you could kind of come to the conclusion that even in the beginning, if he didn't know or wasn't sure if he had those kind of problems, that he was alerted to him because nobody would spend a couple million dollars trying to protect those records. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point because early on in the campaign he did that. He sure did. He locked down everything. So, yeah, well, yeah, yeah I know. I, you know, in, in my attempt to be as fair as possible, I, I'm just trying to consider every scenario, but you're right. I mean, there's just so much that points – uh, to the fact that he 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 knows and he has known this and he's locked down the information and and so now here we are with a birth certificate that he dangled he stood behind a podium and dangled before the world on national international television said this is my birth certificate and you guys have been examining it and researching it forensically uh, and uh, made trips out to Hawaii and back you've been doing this for almost a year and your conclusion is what that the document is completely fraudulent. Um, we don't have any evidence at all that Mr. Obama was born in the state of Hawaii. I know people automatically jump to the newspaper uh, clippings where they have the birth announcements, and they're saying that that's proof that he was born there. Well, I can tell you that through our investigation, we've determined that that is absolutely not proof of really anything other than somebody calling in and giving a birth announcement over the telephone or documents that would have been picked up from the hospital. But the serial number on his birth certificate doesn't make that a possibility, that that's what happened. Um, His serial number is not consistent with those that would have came out of Kapolani Medical Center. Um, We know that the document has anomalies in it that cannot be explained uh, through this normal computing process. We know the document has had information imported to it from other documents, other possible birth certificates that were utilized, and the, and the document has been built as a cut and paste. Yeah, um, it was it was manufactured. Yeah. Um, so that that that's you know that's troubling in and of itself. And then you have the Department of Health in Hawaii that is just vigorously defending not only that birth certificate, but a birth certificate from a little dead baby. Uh, her her name was Virginia Sunahara. 
she was born the same day as Obama, except when the parents or the, the siblings, I think it was, went uh, two years ago to get a copy of her long-form birth certificate. They couldn't get a long form. They got a short form, except her serial number is some 400 digits higher than Obama's. Yeah. Obama's, I believe, is 10641, yeah. and I believe this little girl's is 11,080. And, and what you're that saying? Is impossible. Yeah, there's, there weren't 400 children born in that hospital that day, is what you're saying. Absolutely. I believe there was something like either 48 to, I think there were 48 children born a day in Hawaii at that yeah. time. Yeah. But but not four hundred on one day. Not four hundred. Right. No. Yeah. And so so the number is is fraudulent as well, which goes to the you know the the fraudulent nature of the entire document. Listen, the phone lines are packed. Let's go ahead and take some calls. Uh, Kent, welcome to Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops. You're on with Lieutenant Mike Zulo, the commander of the Cold Case Posse. Uh, ask Lieutenant Zulo whatever you'd like, Kent, and welcome to the show. Yes, sir. How are you doing this afternoon? Good. How are you? Sir? Good. Good. Uh, my question is this: with this election. And this is a, probably more of a question for Pastor. With this election being a referendum on the Word of God, why are Christians not finding a Christian to stand up to what is going on? Because what the Lord did in six days is incredible. And it's like the Christians have just thrown their hands up to defeat in the eye of the devil. Yeah. You know, with God, all things are possible, and I'm just amazed how the Christians are just like, oh, well, why, why are we not finding somebody to put there to do battle against the evil? Right. Well, Kent, thank you so much. Listen, Kent, don't get the Elijah complex. Now, <laughs> I know I get it sometimes. You know, Lieutenant Mike Zulo, you, you, you are a believer as well, right? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. And, and, and I am. And so, Kent, I mean, there are, you know, believers out there, men of God, who are very much involved in this process. Mike and I are too, and you, Kent, and many, many others. I would venture to say millions. But I, 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 I sense your frustration, Kent. Uh, 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 Lieutenant Zulo, you want to weigh in on that? You know, the scripture verse that comes to me is, um, you know, who has bewitched you? Yeah. And even Christians could you know, become susceptible to, you know, subtle, and I, I, don't, I want to be careful how I use this word, but subtle brainwashing techniques. Yeah. You know, you go through a whole educational system that's really has been designed for the last 50 years to dumb you down, if not longer than that, to dumb you down. Now you get political correctness, which made its appearance, I, I believe, in the late 80s, and you start with tolerance and appeasement and acceptance of everything, and you're slowly conditioned. You're conditioned to really weigh and, and give a lot of benefit to doubt. Yeah. And if you go back to the beginning of time, I mean, doubt is the thing that started the whole problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and, and doubt is what is being used today. And then let me let me let me just go one step further. The technique that's being used here is absence of evidence isn't evidence of absence. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to say, even though you don't have evidence of a birth certificate, doesn't mean that birth certificate doesn't exist. That's, that's a very confusing argument to, to talk your way out of. Right. Because what they're telling you is, we're not producing it, but you don't have proof that it doesn't exist. Right. Right. And it's very, very difficult. It's very warped. Right. In concept. Right. Well, yeah, absolutely. And, and Kent, let me just say, and listen, uh, folks, we're, we're right up to the top of the hour, and Lieutenant Zulo has agreed to stay over through this next break, and then we're going to go right back to the phone lines because we have people on the lines. And if you don't mind holding for just three or four more moments, uh, minutes, folks, we'll get you on. If you want to be a part of the show, 623-1330, area code 850, Lieutenant Mike Zulo is with us this afternoon. Uh, Mike, let me just say, uh, if, just for the next minute and a half, before we go to the break, I mean, how frustrating is this for you and Sheriff Arpaio and the members of the team to have all of this evidence, this legal, jury-ready, courtroom-ready, law enforcement evidence, and the media completely ignores it? They act as though there's nothing to be seen. I, I have to tell you, it is the most frustrating thing for Sheriff Arpaio. I mean, a 52-year-old veteran of law enforcement, both in in municipality, sheriff's department, and he was 30 years a federal agent. Um, to see this go on is, is I, I, the man is, is almost speechless, if you could believe it. Yeah. I mean, he talks about this all the time. He just can't believe that we could have all the information 
and he can't get it out there. Yeah. Yeah, it is absolutely. It is. It's frustrating. It's astounding. Uh, we'll we'll be back in a few moments, folks, and take your calls. Those of you that are on the line, please hold. It's uh, it's spiritual. We're living in spiritual. We're living in biblically prophetic times, folks. These are amazing times in which we live. You have an amazing opportunity today to talk with the lead commander of the Arpaio investigation. When we come back, we've got more Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops. You don't want to miss it. We'll be right back. <laughs> 